All right, so shalom once again, brothers and sisters. So let's get into our RSS. And RSS, as you might recall, is the Rastafari Sabbath study. And this is number two, the second one. And it's known in the Ethiopic as Noch. Now, as we mentioned before, in the Hebrew and the Jewish is called Noach. And we went into a little bit of the construction of Noach and the vowel system as well as pointing out Ezra's um, uh, amending in a sense when it is, is Ezra or no, one known as Ezra after the uh, Babylonian um, exile and captivity that introduced the so-called square Hebrew. And Latter-day Jews, also on the um, Ben Yehuda and others, they introduce this uh, nukwa or nekwet. We call it nekwet in the in the Ethiopic and the Gutters, but the vowel system, where they say it as noach. Now we have broke this down before, and we'll just review briefly right here. If we look at the Hebrew, we have the noon. And then we have the Cholam there, then we have the Chet, and then we have the Patak there. Now, if you look at the letters literally, you will have something like this. But if you read it, you will have something like this. Now, the difficult thing, which this really is the KH. I hope you can see this. This is the KH, right? Now, the difficult thing for them, just seeing N and CH, is ascribing the proper vowels. So in the Jewish or the Hebrew voweling, they add the cholam here, which is an O sound. So they have the O. And then they add the patach here, which really should be after this, at this position. But these are some rules, some interesting rules, which are not truly Shemitic rules, but are more the forced Hebrew Jewish rules. They add an H here. They add an A here, excuse me. They add an A here. So it's Noah with this patak instead of a more literal would be looking at the way they, they vowel it, it'll be no ha. But that confusion is resolved when we get to the Ethiopic. You see, in the Ethiopic it is very clear because the Ethiopic now has no here, which is the N O, and then it has the H here, which is the KH sound, right? So it's noch. Now we broke down and explained that noch is linked to this, the ankh. All right? In the mysteries that Moses or Moshe, Mashu, was learned in, it's linked with the ankh. And many, for, for the, there are many overlapping corresponding reasons that present what is even in a legal sense, what constitutes proof that the Ethiopic and the Ethiopic Genesis and concerning the Ethiopic Noah, this is what we want to deal with in this particular portion, the Ethiopic Noah, and we're still on the name because once we begin to decipher the name and understand and begin to overstand the name, the way the ancients overstood the name, then the, the story that we have in this particular parasha or kufal sabbatical reading will become very, very much more clearer to us. We'll be able to see it more in not just a two-dimensional sense, but a three-dimensional and even more dimensionality to it as we begin to gain gnosis or the scientia, which is the scientia or the knowledge. This is why our black Lord and Savior taught us. He says, ye shall what? Know the truth. Though belief or trust at a basic initial level is very important, it's important, even more important once that is there to gain the knowledge because this is what sets us free. Free from superstition, free from ignorance, free from error as well. Now, the connection with the Ankh as we get into this, which we call the Ethiopic, right? The Ethiopic Noah. 
or Noach, the Ethiopic Noach. What is the link with the Ankh? What is the link with the Ankh? Well, first of all, in the story of Noah that we have in the Bible, there are five main points. There are five main points. Now, the five main points, let's deal with some of the five main points. We have the, the flood. We have Noah's ark. We have the subsequent drunkenness of Noah. We have the cursing of Canaan. And then at the end of this part of shot, in chapter 11, we have the Tower of Babel. Now, in the world today, when it is said chapter 11, what does chapter 11 refer to? Chapter 11 refers to bankruptcy. And when you look at the global economic and financial picture, this is exactly what we see. We see a, 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 a economic bankruptcy. But it's not just that sign. That's one sign. That's a, a little thing, seemingly. Chapter 11, Tower of Babel. Chapter 11, legally, IRS speaking, is called bankruptcy. But let's look at everything else in that particular part of shot or portion. We have the corruption of the earth, right? And the, the flood. What is the meaning of these things? Let's get, let's, let's get a better M.O. And this is where we're now going to consult with the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. Let's get into the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary for a moment. All right? As we've mentioned before, and if you're just tuning in now, we'll mention again. This is a kind. This is a hard copy, kind of an old hard copy. This is the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, right? And so we're going to turn to Noah in the the English spelling N O A H. Now when we go to N O right A H. Let's get to Noah. Now grab your pen and your paper and bring a willing and attentive mind and your sacred scripture, the B-I-B-L-E, and be ready, get ready to receive the half of the story that hasn't been told until Rastafari Revelation. Now, when we get to page uh, 486 of the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary. And we touched on this before, but we'll review this again. In the King James Version of the Bible, the New Testament, Noah is also spelled N-O-E. N-O-E. So just make a note of that, that Noah has a couple of different spellings. We touched on the Ethiopic spelling Noah. The, the Hebraic or Jewish spelling Noah compared the square Hebrew letters to the original Ethiopic, right? We made a reference to the link of Ankh, which we hope to expand on. But then you also have the N O A H. But then you have another spelling too, and that's the New Testament spelling that we find in the authorized version of the Bible in Matthew chapter 24, verse 37. And that's N-O-E. Now, the Hebrew means rest, calm, quiet, peace, tranquility, and equilibrium. We went over some of the background of the two different Noahs there are in the Bible. One was the son of Lamech. And so we're speaking now in this part of this portion, Genesis chapter 6 and 9 to Genesis chapter 11, verse 32. We're speaking of the son of Lamech, right? the one who who had built an ark in which he and his family were saved during the flood. Now, how many individuals were saved? There were eight individuals. Now, all this is important to lay out the, the basics of what we mean by Noah is the Ankh man, because there were eight who were saved, all right? And now these eight who were saved, we have what's known as the Og, I believe, the Daod, the Og Daod, or the eight, 
you know what I'm saying, the particular eight that were saved. Now, some will tell you that in ancient Egypt, that they worshipped eight gods. There were these eight gods. This is before the Ennead, but linked with the Ennead, there were the eight gods, and they were known as the Ogdaod. Now, from a Hebraic perspective, in our Bible, scripturally, and in the Ethiopic Noah and the Ethiopic Genesis, we also have the eight. We have Noah and his family. Now, they were saved. How were they saved? Because Noah built an ark. What is an ark? An ark is said to be a very large boat. Or Bamarinya in the Amharic, we say a merkeb. A merkeb. Merkeb is an ark or the Ethiopic word for boat. You understand? A type of a boat, a very large boat. So Noah built an ark in which he and his family were later saved during the flood. During the time of the flood, Noah and his family together make eight, eight individuals. Now, you, you have to recall that according to this parasha, according to the story, all living humanity or human beings that are in that sense, alive today, are traceable, their roots, whether literally, genetically, or as a people, as human beings, or some would say from a, quote, mythological perspective, are traceable to Noah and to those eight. So this is, this is key. So on one hand, if you study Egyptology, they would tell you where the ancient Egyptians had these eight gods. And you'll put that on one side. And then if you go to church and you're studying the Bible and you hear the preacher or pastor say, or you're reading it for yourself, you'll come across where it says that. And these eight were saved during the time of Noah. But what most don't do is put this together or seek to reconcile this. Because the Bible also tells us in Acts of the Apostle, chapter 7, verse 22, that the, the author a writer, primary author and writer of the book of Genesis was, and, and the five books, the first five books of the Bible, was learnt, and we're speaking of our brother Moses, he was learnt in the wisdom of the Egypts or the Egyptians, and he was mighty in both word and deed. This means to us that in order to understand, comprehend, interpret, and understand what the scripture is saying, we have to diligently study, you understand, both the scriptures, the meanings, the words, as well as make a, a contextual link with the period of time of the origination of the source materials we're speaking about. So if we speak about the Bible, then we recognize, well, the version that we have in the English is a translation of a translation of so on and so right? But then if we will get to the earliest and the most authentic um, preservation of the scriptures, and for us, this is the Ethiopic and via His Majesty Haile Selassie's Bible, but from the Ethiopic, even if we just would begin by studying the King James, get beyond the King James to the Schofield study and find the Hebrew words and the Greek words behind that and then further link that, we will come across the Ethiopic. That's another way to reach the Ethiopic. So either way, if you go deep enough and you really get to the ground and the root, you will find the Ethiopic. Yovas. So with that being said, there's another Noah. And this other Noah we, br we briefly touched on, um, this was one of the daughters of Zelophehad. And this is concerning the Manassehite who had no sons and whose inheritance went to his five daughters because they made a case and appeal to the higher Hebrew court. You understand? To the higher Hebrew court. And this was concerning Moses. And Moses had to consult with Yahweh and with Jehovah for Hashem. And Hashem said to Moses and let him know that yes, what the what the daughters are requesting is right and gave certain conditions and women became um, inheritors, especially when there were no sons. And we touched on briefly, there, there's some very important reasons for that, why women in a certain situation are not inheritors, especially in the, the context of the Israelites. 
So we're not going to go over that again right here, but we will if ones are interested in it. We definitely will. But now, let's continue with Noah. Now, Noah, we mentioned that there are about five main, there's five main um, um, stories within this particular Torah portion, namely the flood, Noah's ark, Noah's drunkenness, uh, the cursing of Canaan. And the cursing of Canaan, we have to understand that through white supremacists and whitewashed Judaism and Christianity, this curse of Canaan became something very uh, racist and racial. They said that black people were cursed black because of the curse of Ham. But if you study it, there was no curse on Ham. And But if you study it, you find there was a curse on Canaan. Now, we have various authoritative sources that have done their due diligence to present evidence and fact and even we have art and fact artifacts that explain that the racist a lie about the curse on ham that's in this particular Torah portion reading our second Torah portion reading was not a curse on black people for blackness but actually quite interesting and ironically was the reverse so the the lie that they have told for hundreds of years now gets exposed. But they are only dealing with part of it right now. They're just trying to say, well, it wasn't a curse on ham, and 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 they're backpedaling a little bit. But they still are not telling the the whole of the story because we get into this curse on Canaan and who the Canaanian are or the Canaanites are. It becomes very very interesting. Right, but let's leave that for for a forward moment. Just put a make a note of that and a reference to that. The curse on Ham, the curse on Canaan, question mark, question mark. Now, metaphysically speaking, speaking of Noah, the Noah of Genesis chapter six to nine was the son of Lamech. The Noah that we find in Genesis chapter six to nine, he was the son of Lamech. Now, Lamech. He signifies a strong young man. He, the name means a strong young man from the Hebrew. And this now signifies, so we have the meaning of the name and then the signification. So the meaning of Lamech was a strong young man. Now the signification of Lamech means, uh, is the strength of youth. Now Noah, Noah, or Noah, it means rest rest right thus it is the strength of our youth it's in the strength of our youth because remember Lamech was the father of Noah or Noah so the meaning of this is that the strength of our youth of our youth right that we idealize in this strength we idealize the material and we attach our spiritual enthusiasm to the things of sense. So when we're in our youth as, as, as young ones, as still in a sense immature ones, we idealize material. So when we notice the, the young or the youths, and even if we notice ourselves when we were younger or younger youths, we will recognize this as well, that we tended to idealize the material. Now, you have those who might be older, but they still are spiritually, psychologically immature because they still idealize, idealize the material, and they attach their spiritual enthusiasm to the things of sense, and thus the things of sense perception. But, but let's make, a, let's make note of this, there's the law of reaction. There's the law of reaction. Now, the law of reaction, it sets in. And now, these are, these are laws that exist not just on earth, but in the entire universe. Let us understand this. And see, the Torah, the, the law of, of Hashem, it gives us the clearest insight. As the scripture says, this is our wisdom. This is our wisdom, but the law of reaction now, it sets in, because in our youth, 
we idealize the material and attach our spiritual enthusiasm not to the things of the spirit but to the things of sense and which senses are we talking about we're talking about these same five senses now Noah or Noch rest finds quote favor in the eyes of Yahweh Buruku. so Noah Noah found favor in the eyes of Yahweh if we or if in the strength of your youth or in the strength of our youth if this happened now this is a if this is a conditional but if in the strength of your youth you indulge in the things of sense as many of us might have done more or less that when we were young younger you understand and this is a lesson to the youths out there and the younger folks who might be tuning in and watching that if in the strength of your youth because you're young and because you're strong in that sense and you have that vim and vigor if you indulge in the things of sense indulge in them there is the law of spiritual equilibrium the law of the maku you understand or the scales the law of spiritual equilibrium which is Adonai which is the Lord if you please or Jehovah or Yahweh yod hey wow hey is now working itself out is now working itself out in a rest keyword rest because rest is the, one of the meanings of the name Noah or Noah and you will have bodily ills so if one in their younger years remember the older folks the older black folks used to pass those wisdom gems to the the younger the youngins now some of the youngins they might have heard it but it was like whatever you know it went on but if they were able to survive and get older many of them have testified that what the older folks and we're speaking more in the days when more of our people really had sense spiritual spiritual um who had spiritual equ equilibrium speaking about the that older generation of, of black folks in that sense because there's a fall there's apostasy right now they told us that don't waste your strength preserve your youth because you are young just don't waste it and figure well because I'm young I could keep pushing I could keep it's almost like the party life the club life a lot of the things that are going on among the youths right now there is going to be a spiritual equilibrium and this spiritual equilibrium when Adonai the law of the spiritual equilibrium Hashem who is the law of the spiritual equilibrium works itself out in that rest one might have bodily ills because they wore out their bodies it's almost like if one does not keep or remember firstly and then keep the Sabbath yet to as they get older you understand they will not have that spiritual equilibrium and balance but as the rest sets in the bodily ills will also set in now this is where the race of wicked thoughts this is where the race of wicked thoughts drowns and your earth is cleansed now we found this to be very interesting in the, in the MO. We call this the MO. The MO is the metaphysical overstanding. So when we as Rastafari of the Brotherhood of His Majesty in the line of Jesus society, when we say, what's the MO? Now, MO usually means modus operandi or method of operation. Not too bad. But we're looking at it on a higher level. And that higher level is what is the metaphysical overstanding or the MPO if you want to say it what is the MO or MPO what is the metaphysical overstanding of it now the metaphysical overstanding of Noch is interesting especially as it's laid out here in the metaphysical Bible dictionary because it's telling us that if in the strength of one's youth they have indulged in the things of sense right that the law of spiritual equilibrium which is represented by the Lord or Yahweh or we say Adonai 
our black Lord and Savior, works itself out in a rest that one might have bodily ill. So if you waste your youth, you understand, if you waste your energy, you know, um, when you are, uh, are young, then most when they get older, they will find that they will have much or many or certain bodily ills. And now, here in the definition, it's explaining to us that this is where the race of wicked thoughts drown. Now, one, one needs to remember that we are comparing this and understanding this, seeking to understand this, because we are seeking to make this link, right? All right, yeah. We're seeking to make this link with the contents of this parasha, with the contents of this Torah portion reading. Now, this particular Torah portion reading, it concerns Noah. And, and the key thing that most people know about Noah, whether they accept it as true or to what extent they accept it on, and, and, and what interpretive sense they accept it as true, when we say Noah, the first thing that one thinks is Noah's flood. Now, here in the Metaphysical Bible Dictionary, they're saying that if one's in their youth, looking at the name of, 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 of Lamech, because Lamech was the father of Noch. Now, Lamech's name, it means a strong man. And now this signifies the strength of youth, the strength that one has when they are young. There's a saying among Rastafari that, um, that, that Jah calls the youths. Like, if we see a lot of the youths rising up in Rastafari, that the elders used to say that Jah calls the youths because they are strong. So, now, understand, this is all Kabbalistically speaking for us as Ethiopian Hebrews when we're looking at this and studying in this way. And this is truly science. This is truly knowledge because both in the sense of how the scriptures present Noah and his father, the meanings of their respective names and the signification, and then the context of the story. Then when we look in the context of the story, that the race of wicked thoughts, we not we didn't say the race of wicked people, even though there is an application there as well, but understanding this from the higher metaphysical level, this is where the race of wicked thoughts, the, the race of wicked thoughts, they drown, and the earth, one's earth, is cleansed. So there's both the metaphysical individual applicative that when we are when we comprehend how this applies to ourself but then there's also the greater picture that we can also decipher that applies to the 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 broader so-called society or the seclorum or the world you understand so in order to know it we seek to first of all apply it on that in that inner sense we seek to apply it to ourselves. You, it's like the individual must be born again. The individual must study and show themselves approved. And then when these individuals come together collectively, then you have a strong community. And then you also have key unity because each of the individuals have done their prerequisite homework and building the building, you understand, of their character, the building of their mind, and that basic, the basic steps of discipleship, the basic steps of discipleship. So, understanding that part, now we've seen, well, what is the connection with Noah and Noah's father? See, that's the added connection with Noah's father, is what does Noah's father's name mean? Understanding, well, if he's the father of Noah, and then what did, Noah, what did Noah's father say? It says, and he called his name Noah, or Noah, Noah, you understand, Noah, saying, this saying shall comfort us in our work and in the toil of our hands, which cometh because of the ground, of the ground, which Jehovah, Yahweh, or the Lord, have cursed. Now, in the last part, we touched on um, the Jehovah's. That you, you need to understand that 
Jehovah, for example, when Eve gave birth to Cain or Cain, she pronounced a blessing over Cain. Yet Cain was that murderer that Christ now, our black Lord and Savior, Adonenu, in the New Testament, he says to us, speaking to the, the, the Pharisees, that ye are of your father, the devil, for he was a what, what from the beginning? He was a murderer from the beginning, and he abode not in truth. So when we look, well, who was the first murderer within the context of the Bible? We see that it was Cain. It was Cain. Now that is interesting, because Cain's mother, Eve, she pronounced a blessing on Cain. Notice, a blessing was pronounced on Cain. But now get this for a moment. When Abel, Abel was born, no blessing was pronounced. But from the true God's perspective, it wasn't, see, she was using the name of the Lord, but in her deceived sense. And this is, this is a very um, interesting um, turgum, interpretation or translation that can be made even for today's, um, we can say, um, degenerate uh, motherhood today. There's a degeneracy of the motherhood in this present time, you, you know. And ones will say, well, what about the fathers? But, 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 but let's understand something very keenly, that it was not Adam that pronounced a blessing, but it was Eve. And she pronounced this blessing in the name of who? In the name of Jehovah, in the name of the Lord. She says that I have gotten a man-child from the Lord when Cain was born. And now it's Christ in the New Testament, our black Lord and Savior, that clarifies this picture perfectly. He shows that though there were some who said that they were of God, he said that you are of your father. Because he was able to intuit their thoughts and their, their, their vibes. He was able to, to read their vibes and understand their true intent. And he knew that they had murder on their minds because he spoke the truth. The same is so for any who speak the truth. This is why our Moshiach has taught us these things. And this is why we also need to know these things, practice these things, do these things, and perfect these things in spirit and in truth. So, the race of the wicked thoughts are drowned. So the key signification of Noah's flood can also be that it was not the hybrids and, 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 the, and the, some of the so-called um, uh, aggressive aliens and, and others who were drowned in the hybrids, but it was the race of wicked thoughts which symbolically were being drowned in order that the earth be cleansed. Now, Noah can also be said to be the obedience through which the seed, speaking of the zar or the race, which the seed for a new state of consciousness is saved. So we can also see that Noah is important because he represents the obedience. He's symbolic of one who is in a state of obedience because he heard the word and he sought to be obedient to the word, even though there was great opposition to the word that he heard and he preached. Remember, Noah is also called, scripturally, a preacher of righteousness. And he preached for what seems to be a very long time before the flood. So there was a length of time that he had preached. And what's interesting is that even though he preached and he preached about righteousness, that it was only his family that accepted that because the ark wasn't just in a sense for him it could have ha housed others as well 
But the reason why it did not house others is because they did not they did not accept the message. But still, he preached, he proclaimed. For, for, so the opportunity for salvation was there because the word went out. Some would say these teachings of his majesty that we have the honor to, to share and to, to study and to grow in, the privilege. Some would say, well, how come other folks don't get it? It's free will. But it does not mean that as there was a flood in Noah's time, that there's not also equally vis-a-vis -a, -vis a flood in our present time. So Noah is that obedience to which the seed, the race, for a new state of consciousness is saved. So there's a there's a there's a seed, and this seed is for the new state. A new state or a new paradigm of consciousness needs to be preserved. So Noah is that one who was chosen to preserve that that seed of the new state of consciousness. Now again, Noah. Noah typifies the consciousness that's at rest in God, in Ha Elohim. That Noah, he is a type of the 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 psychology or the or the soul, let's say, that rest in Ha Elohim. We have this in six and nine, where our portion this is where our portion begins. That the consciousness at rest. We can call Noah. Noah can be even defined as his name as consciousness at rest in God or Elohim. Now, in Genesis 6 and 10, the three sons of Noah, the, it's the three sons of Noah that represents types of the mind. The three sons of Noah, of Noah represents types of the mind. Now, stay tuned, my brothers and sisters. We're going to address these, these types of, 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 of the mind, these types of state of the mind that Noah's three sons represent. So stay tuned. Shalom. Rastafari.